we continue in on our series, we thank God for all of you being here today. And we praise God for all of you watching us online. And we hope and pray that this service has been a blessing to you, that this service has been um, uh, has inspired you spiritually. We thank God for our worship leaders, and we thank God for our worship band and all of those who had a grand part in making this service even a reality. So over the last four weeks, uh, over the last four weeks, we have looked at the concept of dealing with this is us, and over those four weeks, each um, Sunday, we have looked at the idea that every decision that you make or make in the future need to be made with the idea, will God get the glory from this? So every week we have been looking at the idea that every decision I make as an individual, regardless if it's relationship, regardless if it's how how I deal with my money, if it's how I deal with my honey, if it's how I deal with my family, if it's how I deal with my health, you got to ask yourself the question, does God get the glory from the decision I have made? Because many of us look at what pleases us now, but it'll hurt us later. Uh, We look for self-quick gratification with long-term misery. That's why we spend more time on the marriage ceremony than counseling. That's why we spend more time trying to pick out our dress and our suit than picking out the right mate. That's why that the ceremony getting five, six hundred people together to celebrate and for you to pay for them to come and for them to stay all day long and say, I'm not going to eat until I go to the wedding because that's why I'm going to eat up everything that's available. That is more important than looking for somebody who you want to kick it with for the rest of your life. And that's a big thing. That's a big thing. So what we talked about over this uh, the past few weeks is that a lot of us have trouble as adults because we have unaddressed issues as children. Let me give it to you again, just in case you just peeked in on this service. That I am a manifestation of what my childhood was, good or bad. Okay, many men never grow up to be a man because they were raised by a single woman who treated them as their man. So now he's 40 years old, still acting like he's four years old because his mama rescues him all the time. So it's hard to be a man in the house when you're still wearing pampers. Many women have never uh, 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 addressed um, anything in their own personal life because it's been more about looking good than being good. That we will spend three hours on our hair but won't spend 30 minutes cleaning up. Somewhere along the way, we've had a disconnect, and it might be because we're looking for a man that can be a daddy because daddy was absent. So a lot of times our marriage life is a response to our childhood life. And it might not be that it's all bad. Each one of us had good days and bad days, and we shouldn't complain because if you made it out, God has still been good to you. So, so that's something you and I have to recognize. But, but what Paul deals with here at the end of this uh, uh, lesson, that's just a recap of the last three weeks, um, uh, that he deals with something that is amazing in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Verse number 39, he says this, or 36, he says this. But if a man thinks that he is treating his fiancée improperly and will inevitably give in to his passions, let him go ahead and get married and marry her as he wishes. If it is not a sin to go ahead and get married. But if he has decided firmly not to marry He says, make it not urgent, but leave her alone. All right, all right. Y'all got quiet. So the person who marries his fiance does well, and the person who doesn't marry even does better. A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. If her husband dies, 
she is free to marry anyone she wishes. Only if he dies. Not you killing him if he dies. But only if he uh, loves the Lord. So he's saying if your spouse dies, only go get somebody else who already loves the Lord. But in, in my opinion, it would be better for her to stay single. And I think I am giving you counsel from God's spirit when I say this. All right. This is us, final edition. Now, here it is. Here it is. You have to be careful when you look at what Paul's blessing is because when you get to verse number 36, 36 does not make sense if you don't read verse number 1. Paul speaks of him having the gift of celibacy. He has the gift of not needing that physical sexual relationship to satisfy him. He says, I am satisfied by being interested and in tune with the kingdom of God. He said, I don't have time for a boo because I'm trying to get as many people to heaven as possible. But then he says, that's not everybody's gift. That's not everybody's gift. He actually says in verse number 36 to the end of the chapter, each individual is unique in their nature. All right, let me say that again. Even the relationship that you and I feel ourselves in is uniquely ours and not uniquely mimicking somebody else. All right, let me, let me say. Many of our marriages and relationships fail because you and I are so busy trying to look like Barack and Michelle. And now you have a good marriage, but because you are comparing your marriage to somebody you think is better, you make home miserable because the first thing that can kill a marriage or a relationship or even a dating exercise is to compare what you can't see. Everybody looks happy in public. Everybody looks happy in those glamour shots. Y'all don't know how crazy you look taking shots of yourself in 10 different angles on Facebook. Everybody's grinning on that. But the reality is the camera never turns around and shows the good and the bad days of every individual. Let me, let me say something to you. Let me say something to you. Everybody has good and bad in their relationship when you are married. All right. Nobody, nobody wants to say amen. Uh, nobody is happy all the time. But let me tell you something. What might make you miserable might not bother me. All right, let me, let me, y'all, y'all, boy, y'all, y'all know what I've been through. The folks in the building ought to say amen. I've had a rough morning. Let, let me say something. My wife and I, we are clean freaks. Our house, and I thank God, my wife cleans that house, I mean, to exhaustion. She, I mean, every day, that house is spick and span. That's a blessing because guess what? I am anal retentive also. But I have gone to some people's houses that I've visited that I had to do like this to get to the couch and had to move over some clean and dirty clothes to sit down. Hey, if you're not watching today, I hope you don't think I'm talking about you. But for their family, that was okay. Don't make what makes somebody else happy be forced on what makes you happy. Every relationship is unique. Okay? And the reason we can't be happy with what we got is because we're always looking across the 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 field and think the grass is greener on the other side. Uh, when I was, when we first moved in our house, when we first moved in our house, I couldn't afford sod, so we put out grass. And I remember, I mean, we put out seeds, seeds, and I watered those seeds every day. And now I got a full, a full, uh, full throw out there in my front yard. But I, I used to look at my muddy yard and can compare my yard to the neighbor's yard. It, I mean, from a distance, his grass looked like Tiger Wu was out there hitting the green. I mean, it looked beautiful until one day I accidentally got his mail, and I had to walk across his yard to give him his mail, and I looked down at it, and I found out that the reason it was green was because he was cutting his weeds low. You missed it. From a distance, it looked beautiful. 
when I stood on it, I found out it looked just like mine. Let me tell you something, church. It's many people watching me today that are thinking, if I can get away from him, if I can get away from her, if, if this person just did everything I wanted, everybody looks good until you have to live with them. Okay, you don't want to have church. People who you only visit can put on a visitor's face for two hours. Okay, y'all not going to have church. And everybody looks good at night. But now when you commit to somebody, you have decided, I got to take the good and the bad, the ups and the downs, the sick days and the good days. Because if you be honest with yourself, what you married is what you dated. Okay, you, you, they didn't just at the I do. They didn't just start changing and say uh, all of a sudden, they, if they went to the club at night, they did that when y'all dated. If some days you couldn't find them because they weren't answering the phone, they did that. If, if she was a shopaholic when you were dating, sometimes you couldn't find her because she was at North Park Mall, that's not a shock to you at I do. It's that you think that at the wedding, everything is going to get like you see on television. Hallmark is not reality. Martha Day, it is not lifetime it, it always ends with them smiling. It always ends with them crying. It always ends with them hugging. But reality, we got to get off of television and get in God's word and see that maybe if she got better, she wouldn't want you. If, yeah, I'm having church. I done woke up now. Give me a cup of coffee. Uh, Lou Holtz, Lou Holtz had, Lou Holtz, which I don't like him too much. I found out his political views. But Lou Holtz, when he was 20 years ago, uh, he was retired from Notre Dame. He was Notre Dame's head football coach. And he was sitting on the couch. And his wife was in the uh, kitchen um, uh, doing some dishes. And she was screaming out. Uh, she said, uh, Lou, I wish you were taller. I, I married you, but I wish that you are much taller than you are now. And he didn't say anything. He was sitting there on the couch, real quiet. She said, I wish you had a full head of hair. You've always been bald right here at the top, man. You're losing your hair. And that, I've always liked men with long, flowing hair. And she said, your voice is squeaky. That, that they had been married for 40 years. And she said, you, you know, when you talk, it's kind of a squeaky voice. And he took the last one, and he said, if I was everything that you wanted me to be, I wouldn't have married you. You missed it. That some of us want perfection while we are chopped up ourselves. Some of us are looking for greatness, but you haven't become great yourself. And sometimes your relationship might not be as bad as you think it is. You keep comparing it to people who you only see on Facebook. Let me, let me give it to you again. Reality is truth. Okay. Melanie's and I have good days and we are bad. Some days we can't stop hugging and just can't stop kissing foreheads and can't stop holding hands. And there's some days where I drive in the front seat and she's in the very far back seat. And there's only two of us in the car. It, come on, church. You don't want to be. It's some days we don't even want to be in the house together. You, if you have never driven in the garage and just sat there, you ain't been married. <laughs> Thank be to God, Walmart is open all night. I think she's walked through there, and I've walked through But at the end of the day, we know that our uniqueness, let me say something to you. Paul suggests, if you can get married, do it. He says, if you don't get married, don't. He says, because every relationship is unique. Okay. My relationship with my wife is not the exact same as my parents' relationship because we live in a different generation. And sometimes you can make your husband try to be your daddy and you wouldn't want to be married to your daddy. Sometimes you'll make your wife try to be like your mama and your mama cooked every day and made dessert, but the problem is you didn't realize your mama wasn't working. Now you're asking your wife to do the same thing your mama did after she finished a nine-hour shift. 
you got to look at your own situation as unique, but what is non-negotiable is putting God in the middle of it. And the reason most of us have problems is because we're trying to satisfy each other physically, but you have not satisfied God spiritually. And the only way I can get in your head, if you're dating, if you're dating, is get out of folks' bed. Okay, boy, this is tough. Y'all, 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 I'm about to go sit down. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me help you with something. Let me help you with something. That Paul says in verse number 36, stop wasting each other's time. He says in verse number 36, you, you shouldn't date for 100 years. If you're going to get married, after you find out this is the one, he says don't waste time. But then he says on the flip side in verse number 37, don't move too fast because he uses the word urgency. What does that word mean? It means that I have to be willing to date someone until God gives me the sign, this is the one. And once he gives me the sign, this is the one, then I shift from wanting to date to wanting to get in an eternal relationship with because he says it in verse number 38 and 39, this is forever. So point number one is, um, point number one is every relationship is unique. But point number two that, that is so important to us is that this is forever. What, what do you mean this is forever? Marriage is for life. Okay. You, you probably say, well, Pastor, what does that mean? You mean I can't get a divorce? The Bible gives, uh, we, when I grew up in the church, that, I mean, the only way you could get out of a relationship is by death or by you catching them with pictures in infidelity. There, there, are, other, there are other situations that there is what's called abandonment where somebody just disconnects from the family. There is financial abandonment. There, is, there are other ways in which divorce comes in play. Okay, I don't want to spend time there. I want to spend time at, you don't have to end there if you start off right. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say something that's tough. And I know I might get a lot of letters and emails because I've been getting them, <clears throat> but that's fine. Stop going into the relationship saying, I can get out. Because if you go into it saying, I can get out, you're going to find a reason to get out. Okay, let me get that to you again. <clears throat> Most of us have what's called escape latches in our relationship. That's why we keep a house over here. <laughs> I got a house, she got a house, and just in case this thing don't work out. I can go back to my spot, you can go back to them. If you start off like that, you're going to end back. Keep that house clean because you're going to get in back there. What actually works best is when we got to work hard to break up. Okay. Oh, y'all. Okay. Okay. You, you, that's why we keep separate accounts. That's why we keep everything separate. That's why most relationships, uh, I got $5, you got $5, I got a bank, you got a bank. And I'm not saying that's a sin. This is Paul Day. For Melanie and I to break up, it's going to take months, years, and days. So you know what it actually says? It's not as bad as that moment seems. You don't have to say amen. That most of us got divorces off of a moment instead of the right reason. Uh, you can't go back and do something about the divorce. There's some, some people that, that was horrible, and I even say in their horribility, that you knew they were horrible before you said I do. You just thought you were good enough to change them. You're not. You're, you're, I don't care what you can do. Y'all read between the lines. I don't care what you can do. You're not good enough to change anybody. Only person that can change anybody is God. 
Yeah. And that's why you ought to make sure they love the Lord before you start loving them. Because it gets tough day in, day out, as bodies start changing, as minds get weaker. And, and so you want somebody who will take care of you when you can't take care of yourself. Are, are y'all with me? You don't want somebody who just on your arm because it looks good. You want somebody that's in your heart. And Paul says, make it I do. Hey, let me, let me say something to you. Let me say something to you. Marriage is beautiful when you do it right. Are, are y'all with me? Marriage is fun when you're with somebody you want to kick it with. It is nothing that brings me. We had to go to Longview this, this uh, Tuesday for a basketball game. Two hours away. Two hours away. Uh, and it was nothing more exciting for me for us to get in the car and drive for two hours. And Melanie's talking a little bit, sleeping a little bit. I don't, I don't have a co-driver. I just got a, a co-prayer. But there was nobody in the front seat who I would rather have been in there with, with someone. That, that didn't have nothing to do with sex. That didn't have nothing to do with going out to a $300 restaurant. Y'all see how quiet it got? We ate two cheeseburgers from Dairy Palace. One order of French fries. And because I've been doing good, she let me have a Coke. Y'all and stop needing the world when you can't afford it. Sometimes the best date night you can have is sitting on the back porch, watching the birds fly. Stop making life so difficult. And social media, I know we're on social media today, so don't turn this page off. But... Uh, 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 what we watch on television, what we watch in books, and what we watch on the, the, the uh, 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 BET and all of the, the stories, it makes your simple life so frustrating because it shows you the worst of life, but it doesn't have to be like that. My prayer, I don't, I'm not scared of dying. I am not scared of dying. I am, the older I get, the more dying is not a bad option. I just don't want to die by myself. And I don't want to die without Melanie and Blake being right there next to the bed. Y'all missed it. The two people who are with me the most, that's, and it, when he gets married, I hope he marries somebody that, that uh, can, can, will love me too. It would be nothing better. I hear people all the time dying with their family around them. I mean, how beautiful is that, that I've lived a life that they still want to hang out with me when I'm 80 years old. Instead of having 10 families with separate visiting hours. Make this as us a blessing to God. Raise your children up with a healthy family at home. You shouldn't have to go to 10 houses to get your children. When you do God's business right, guess what? God honors those who are faithful. And it's never too late to get it straight today. Don't, don't say, I've already wasted all my time. I've wasted all my energy. No, everybody can change today. For some of us, it might be us looking back at what we have now and start appreciating it more. Because women won't love, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and men won't respect. It's simply, maybe you come in the house and your man has been working 12, 13 hours and you say, hey, I really appreciate you for how hard you work. Maybe it's you telling your wife or your girlfriend, I love you and I thank God for you and I appreciate you. It's you viewing what you have better than what you think you could have. But secondly, if you're dating, sometimes you got to put a pause on your dating and say, I'm going to do this God's way. Does this relationship please God? Am I just trying to get married because my friends are married? Am I just trying to do it uh, because I think that's what the world expects me to do? No, do whatever you do in the sight of God that pleases the almighty God. Look what Warren Grisby says. Warren Grisby says a statement that I want to give you before we leave. He says, it's better to live in single loneliness than in married cussedness. I thought that was amazing. He said, it's better to be lonely 
than to spend your whole life cussing and wishing you were lonely. <laughs> so, Pastor, what are you saying? I want you to be happy. Paul says he wants you to be happy. But do it in the sight of God so God can get the honor, the praise, and the glory for what great things he is doing in your life. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this series this month. We hope and pray that we would understand that every relationship is unique, but we are committed to doing this thing until death do us part. Bless us right now. Keep us. Watch over us. We pray that marriages have been strengthened. Single people have been secured. People who are dating have been refocused. But most of all, we're killing our kids when they see unstable parents because they duplicate what they see. So God, help us to have stable homes so that we can raise kids up that love the Lord. Please forgive us of our sins. Thank you for being better to us than we would know how to be to ourselves. In your son's name we do pray. And all who believe said, amen.